the living word. The word that is alive. I am healed by the word. I am delivered by your word. I am set free by your word. I am resurrected by the word. I am transformed by your word. The mountains move at your word. Walls crumble at your word. Eyes are open. At your word. Situations turn around at your word. Somebody just speak into your situation and say, In the name of Jesus, I speak life. Uh, Father, I declare your word, your living word into every situation I face this morning. I declare an answer to prayer. A response to declaration, to prophecy, to utterance at your word. Mm. Faith Moves mountains. Your word shall not return void. <laughs> Hallelujah. In Jesus' name, we pray and we declare. And the people of God said, Amen. 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 Hallelujah. I would like you to stand with me before we... we read the word together. And I thank God for the ministration by the worship team this morning and the flow of the Spirit. But I would like you to turn to at least one or two people. Reach out to them, lay hands upon them and tell them you are free by the word. In the name of Jesus. Hey, go, go on, turn to them and declare in the name of Jesus by the word of the living God. By the living word of God, I declare over you a turnaround. I declare over you a change in your situation. I declare over you an answer to prayer. I declare over you healing in your body now. You, you are the living word. And we declare over you life according to your word. And the people of God said, Amen. While you remain standing, can you open your Bible with me to Proverbs chapter 4? Proverbs. Chapter 4, I've asked the media team to put this on the screen so we can all read this together. This is the text of our word this morning. Proverbs 4, and we're going to read verses 1 through to 13 together. Hallelujah. Are you ready, church? Look at your neighbor and say, I hope you're ready. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you. I will count to three and we will speak and declare the word. The word of God is alive. The word of God is real. The word of God is powerful. The word of God is not ordinary. Hallelujah. So, ladies and gentlemen, one, two, three, go. Hear, my children. The instructions of a father. Keep 
keep my commands and live. Get wisdom. Get understanding. Do not forget, nor turn away from the words of my mouth. Do not forsake her, and she will preserve you. Love her, and she will keep you. Wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom, and in all you're getting, get understanding. Exalt her, and she will promote you. She will bring you honor when you embrace her. She will place you on my head, an ornament of grace, a crown of glory she will deliver to you. Hear, my son, and receive my sayings, and the years of your life will be many. I have taught you in the way of wisdom. I have led you in right paths. When you walk, your steps will not be hindered, and when you run, you will not stumble. Take firm hold of instruction. Do not let go. Keep her, for she is your life. Hallelujah. You may be seated. May God bless the reading of his living word this morning. I want you to hear with your two ears this morning, your outer physical air, spiritual air. I want you to listen with your heart because the Holy Spirit will register words beyond my words in your heart. There are things that you will hear beyond this sermon or this utterance of mine this morning. God has something he has to impart to somebody this morning. We've spent some weeks looking at vision. We unpacked vision. We unpacked destiny. And God has been speaking to us about the definition of vision. And God spoke to our hearts and said, I have not finished. I need my people to pick up wisdom. I need them to hear me very clearly in the direction that I am taking them. And so this morning, this day, I want you to listen with deep, rapt attention at what God is releasing into your heart. Many Christians have knowledge, but don't have wisdom. Many people have information, but the voice of wisdom is very mute in their lives. And there are people here that God wants to change or tweak your trajectory just slightly so you can arrive quicker and in one piece at your destination. God does not want you to shipwreck your life. I read something recently and it blessed me. It said that God has ordained many things for our lives. And he has factored in our stupidity. He has factored in our stubbornness. He has factored in our wrong choices. And this morning, if you, if you listened with your heart to the verses we read, wisdom is speaking and she is given the feminine article, she. And the reason why in a Hebrew context and in the ancient times is because the feminine article, the woman, was not usually in the place of power. The feminine article is used here to let you know 
that God is coming from a place of suggestion, not a place of compulsion. In other words, it is your choice. You are in the driving seat of your life, and if wisdom speaks, you can receive or reject that voice. Tap your neighbor and say, the, the choice is yours. And this morning, I have 50 items on wisdom and knowledge. 50. I cannot get through all of them. I am going to use today as an introduction into wisdom. Hallelujah. Because we're going to sit on this until somebody's heart and ears and eyes are opened to the voice, to the nudges, to the revelation that comes from wisdom. Hallelujah. The first thing I want to say to you is that wisdom is a person. Wisdom is not a concept. Wisdom is a person. God is wisdom. And in Proverbs 8, we read that wisdom was at creation. And wisdom formed the physical world that we see. And by conclusion, we understand that wisdom equates to God. And God Put himself in a place of subordination to your will. That is why on judgment day, when God is no longer in subordination to your will, he will judge you based on whether you listened or not. Tap your neighbor and say, you will listen in Jesus' name. Wisdom is the principal thing. Proverbs 4, 7, therefore get wisdom, and with all your getting, get understanding. Proverbs 4, 5, get wisdom, get understanding, forget not, neither decline from the words of my mouth. It's almost like this person is pleading. If you read the tone of Proverbs Chapter 4 is like pleading, please. Come on. Respond. Incline. Receive. Hear. And that is because we are inherently stubborn. Tap your neighbor and say, you will not be stubborn in Jesus' name. Oh, thank you, Lord. There are two kinds of hearts. A sheep heart and a goat heart. Ask a neighbor, look at your neighbor and say, which one are you? Let me just give you some information. Or let me just say a few things that separates knowledge from wisdom. Knowledge is mainly external and relates to acquiring information and things in our environment. Knowledge is data. Knowledge is logic. Knowledge is empowerment. Empirical. We gain knowledge by using our intellect in the world. Knowledge comes from books, observation, science, culture, religion, through our five senses. Knowledge can be true or can be false. 
knowledge can be beneficial or detrimental to us. Knowledge is solid like Lego. Wisdom is fluid like water. Knowledge is loud. The voice of knowledge is confident. That is why when somebody has a lot of knowledge, sometimes they become puffed up. Are you with me? Arrogant. Because knowledge is sure of itself. Are you here? Our whole education system is based on knowledge. You spend 13 years acquiring knowledge. And you wonder why children are so foolish with all the knowledge. It's because our education system is not based on wisdom. It's based on what? Knowledge. Tap your neighbor and say, do you have knowledge or wisdom? <laughs> wisdom, unlike knowledge, is not external. It is internal. Hello. Wisdom is not acquired. Wisdom is discovered. <laughs> Hallelujah. Wisdom is inherent within you. Wisdom is an inner channel within the human being that God created. So, Knowledge is external. Wisdom is internal. Knowledge is loud. Knowledge is proud. Knowledge is sure. Knowledge is clear. Knowledge is seen. Knowledge is acquired. Wisdom is Wisdom is fluid. Wisdom comes from within. Wisdom is not empirical. That is why wisdom thinks outside of the box. Oh, hallelujah. Are you here? When you have wisdom... You have calmness. Hallelujah. When you have wisdom, you have access to God's voice. Oh my God, are you here? So can you look at your neighbor and say, may you Receive wisdom. Wisdom is an internal source. It's already inherent in human beings. Wisdom needs to be nurtured, cultivated, and channeled rather than acquired. Wisdom needs to be listened to rather than be talked at. Wisdom is an internal form of knowing which is present from birth and never leaves us even though we tend to ignore it. Wisdom is not your conscience. 
even though wisdom sometimes steps on the platform of your conscience to speak to you. Wisdom can come in form of a teacher, a mentor, even an acquaintance at the bus stop speaking to you about and reminding you about something he has already told you. Hello, are you here? If you notice, God used a phrase a lot with the Israelites. He said they were stiff-necked. Remember when you have a stiff neck, you can't turn? You are rigid. When your heart is rigid in medicine, there is something called sclerosis. Doctor, it's a hardening of the heart whereby the heart is not soft and it cannot pump and you have heart attacks. Hello, are you here? The Bible uses the phrase, the phrase stony heart. A heart that is not flexible, that is not malleable, that is not soft, that is not it is not, in, it's not fluid. Tap your name and say, that will not be you in Jesus' name. Marriages break down because wisdom is ignored. People lose money. People fall into all kinds of traps because they ignore wisdom. Wisdom disguises in many forms and speaks through chosen vessels throughout one's lifetime. In different seasons of your life, wisdom can manifest or disguise in different people to speak to you. Wisdom, Greek word quina, is an internal interaction with your heart, with your will, whilst knowledge is an external transaction with your brain and with your mind. Wisdom is usually resisted with our ego. There's an ongoing battle between wisdom and our ego. When wisdom speaks, ego says no. Wisdom says, go and apologize to her. Ego says, no. She offended me first. Has that happened to you before? Don't put up your hand. Ego is that internal part of you that always or generally is fixated on right. My right. My pride. My name. Me. I. Wisdom thinks of the other person. Wisdom thinks of the bigger picture. And wisdom speaks from a vantage point of seeing your life as part of a bigger matrix. Don't touch that dial. No. <laughs> Tap your neighbors, that will not be your portion in Jesus' name. Pride is the nemesis of wisdom in our lives. Pride is an obstruction to the river of wisdom. A dam that restricts our access to the flow of life. When Adam fell and we fell with him, 
that part of us that became sin, the Adamic nature in us, it, it is the reason for wars in our world. It is the reason for conflicts in families. It's the reason for the craziness that has happened in human history. Pride, ego, the Adamic nature, that's part of us. And wisdom is there, gently walking with you. Wisdom is relentless. Wisdom is persistent. Wisdom is not easily put off. Wisdom is gentle. Wisdom waits for you to calm down. Hello. And then she speaks. He speaks. And depending on your mood, depending on whether you're open to the workings of the Holy Spirit, you will either hear or reject the voice of wisdom. Wisdom is like a river that flows from his presence, connecting us to all divine blessings, riches, and glory. Wisdom knows the path of your life to your paradise, to your promise, to your, pa your palace. And many times we grab knowledge because it's louder, it's boastful, it's sure of itself, and it overrides the voice of wisdom many times. Ask yourself, looking back over the last 10 years, 20 years, 30 years, two weeks, what would you have done better if you had listened to the voice of wisdom? Today, I want to introduce the person, the spirit of wisdom to you. And I want your heart to hear beyond the words of what Pastor Jay is saying or trying to say. I, I want there to be a spiritual communication with your heart. Let your heart undergo some kind of microwave technology in the Holy Ghost as I am speaking. So that you don't hear a sermon, but something within you is tweaked, is transformed. And you can begin to hear wisdom better. Wisdom created all things. So his fingerprints are all over creation. As you connect with human beings of all kinds and creation in all its forms, you will increase in wisdom and awareness. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you sit with rich people only, you would only have the knowledge and the small wisdom of rich people. Hello? If you sit with the poor, you will receive the wisdom and knowledge they have. If you go on mountain hikes, and travel the world. If you've noticed, people who are well-traveled are more balanced. Because they have mingled with different cultures. And God hides wisdom in his creation. So the more of his creation and people you connect with, you collect more wisdom. Oh my God, are you here? 
inherent in every culture. He has hidden parts of his wisdom. And if you don't connect with them, you won't have that part of his wisdom. That is why wisdom takes humility to acquire. Because you're open to learn. When you get to a new country, a new environment, a new culture, a new community, just know that wisdom is already there. And he's living with them. And he wants to speak with you through them. That is why you can never look down on anybody. Oh, hallelujah. It was the little girl in Naaman's house that gave him the word of wisdom. And I think you should go and see the prophet. If he hadn't listened to that little girl, his leprosy would have remained. Are you here? There are keys to your next level that are hidden in some very peculiar places and with some very peculiar people. And you have to be humble enough to connect with them so that wisdom can discharge your key, your access to your next level in Jesus' mighty name. For some of us, humility is the key for the next level. Pride is the wall that is stopping you from your promotion. Wisdom is unconditional love. God is wisdom. Wisdom is God. Wisdom is usually situation specific and generally flows differently even when another similar situation presents itself. Unlike knowledge which is empirical. So one woman can come up to God because she needs an answer to a situation. And wisdom tells her something completely different to another woman exactly in the same situation. Because wisdom is not empirical. You cannot package wisdom and say this is how wisdom is going to operate. No. Wisdom speaks and it is situation specific. That is why when you are raising your child, don't raise your child based on knowledge only because you may lose that child or you may confuse that child or you confuse yourself. Because every life, every soul, every individual is unique. And you need more than knowledge to properly raise a child. You need the voice of wisdom. Or you and I will mess it up. Hallelujah. Parenting requires doses of wisdom. Hallelujah. That intuitive nudge. You say, don't smack him today. Just leave him. <laughs> I feel like whacking his head. Just leave him. Wisdom. <laughs> and if you only have African knowledge. <laughs> Hello. If all, your, if you, all of your parenting knowledge is drawn from Africa, you will, oh my goodness, your child will be raised only on African knowledge. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Tap your neighbor and say, wisdom is the principal thing. Knowledge is predictable and straightforward, always following the rules and laws of science, mathematics, and logic. Wisdom is usually unpredictable and many times flows from intuition flying in the face of science or logic. 
walk around the walls seven times. And on the seventh day, walk around it seven times. It defies logic. Doesn't make any sense. For that is the voice of wisdom. We have run out of wine. Fill the pots with water. Water flies in the face of logic. Are you here? God, when he is speaking with wisdom to you, you're, if you are, many of us are too schooled in knowledge and logic and data. Wisdom sounds crazy and rubbish and counterintuitive. And so we, we, we grab hold of knowledge and we flow with knowledge more than with wisdom. My dad raised me with the belt. So when my son began to misbehave, guess what? Knowledge I used. <laughs> Until wisdom began to speak to me. And wisdom came to me in a dream. And in the dream, I was slapping my son too hard. And I had to pipe down. Tap your neighbor and say, Listen to the voice of wisdom. Knowledge speaks boldly and loudly while wisdom speaks gently and quietly. Knowledge and wisdom are not enemies. They're actually married and they complement each other. They are joined at the hip by understanding. Understanding is that flexible connection whereby you acquire. The Bible says this. It says, by wisdom is a house built. By understanding, it is established. And through knowledge, its rooms are filled with all kinds of exotic, wonderful things. In other words... For you to have a complete house, a beautiful house, you need the interplay of wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. For your life to be balanced. Hallelujah. So, wisdom needs knowledge. Wisdom dips into the bucket of knowledge. And it tells you, this is the time to apply the knowledge. Hallelujah. Are you here? In other words, it mingles Kronos and Kairos. It mingles the logic and the illogical together. That is why you need understanding. So you know when to use this and when not to use it. Hallelujah. There's a time to embrace. There's a time to refrain from embracing. There's a time for everything. It is understanding that wrote that passage. Oh my God, are you here? In other words, understanding knowledge is like the alphabet. A. Someone say A. So A, B, C, D. That's knowledge. Logic. Are you here? Understanding is when you Join those words to make words. Are you here? And wisdom is when you join those words into sentences so you know when to speak. Hallelujah. A child may have the words, but a child will say certain things in the wrong time and in the wrong places because a child lacks wisdom. Are you with me? And so, you are able to have the information, able to handle the data, but wisdom tells you when and how to use it. That is why you cannot place a gun in the hand of a child. 
the child has the arm, has the muscles, but cannot handle the responsibility of such a dangerous weapon. Are you with me? So wisdom says you have this information. It is toxic information. It is very confidential information. You don't go and put it on Facebook or call your friend. Hallelujah. Did you hear that story about three pastors? They had a confidential circle. The first pastor said, within this confidential circle, I want to confess. I have been stealing money from the church. The second pastor said, I have a sin. I have to confess. I have been sleeping with somebody in the church. The third pastor said, I have to confess. I, I gossip. <laughs> Everything I hear, I have to tell somebody. <laughs> Having information and knowing how to handle the information are two different things. So you and I have to have wisdom. Hallelujah. Look at your neighbor and say, get wisdom. I'm introducing wisdom to us today. Let, let me give you some symptoms of wisdom. When you have wisdom, joy comes. There's this deep, blissful, joyful thing that comes up within you that makes you know you've received and responded to wisdom. When you have wisdom, you are learning new things and receiving fresh revelation. When you are focusing on yourself, when you're thinking about yourself, when you have, um, what's the word? Um, you're having a pity party. You're losing sight of wisdom. When you have wisdom, you will have energy and creativity. You will be able to see things and something that has always been in your life, always been in your garage, always been around you, suddenly it just makes sense that I can use this. You are hearing the voice of wisdom. The voice of wisdom said to the woman who was in poverty, he said, what do you have in your house? I have a cruise of oil. And wisdom said, go and bring that. Hello, are you here? Wisdom will make you see things in a completely different way. Things, something that you would count as useless or not useful, suddenly wisdom speaks and it becomes a source of income. It becomes, it becomes a source of joy. It becomes a source of creativity. It becomes a source of energy and innovation. That is wisdom. Where you're not learning, where you're not reading, where you're not flowing, I can tell you that you are outside of wisdom. Thinking outside the box is usually wisdom's language. Those who have this perfectionism um, syndrome, they won't do anything until it's perfect. Even when somebody is starting something and it's not perfect and they criticize it, those people are far from wisdom at that point in time. Perfectionism is rigidity. It stifles wisdom and, it, and the freedom to be creative. It allows condemnation and self-hate, especially at the embryonic stages of creativity. I just want to start this thing. I'm thinking of this. I'm thinking of that. You, who, where, what. Come on, stop that. You know, you've not even prayed about it. You've not even talked to God about it. 
when somebody is bringing a fresh idea, at least allow them to be creative. Hello. Hallelujah. You need to allow the voice of wisdom in your life. Repressing emotions does not allow wisdom and its energy to flow. Emotional intelligence is close to wisdom and allows you to understand yourself and see others better than what they appear to be. Hallelujah. Unhappiness flows against wisdom. So remove everything that brings unhappiness and dampness and self-hate and looking inwards into your life. Hello. I'm going to stop in the next few minutes. But let me just say something. Revelation is the language of wisdom. How many of us remember 1 Kings, I think it was 19, 11, thereabout, when the prophet was running from Jezebel and went into a cave. Remember that? Remember that um, encounter? He went into a cave. You know that um, music band by Maurice, what is it, Maurice White and Philip Bailey? Earth, wind, and fire. That's where it came from. That music band, it came from the fact that the prophet was standing at the cave and then there was an earthquake. Remember? Then there was wind and then there was fire. Earth, wind, and fire. <laughs> you need some, many times when you are, um, when you need to hear the voice of wisdom, you need to go into a cave. Hallelujah. Um, because, let me, let, me use, let me use the word cave. Someone say C-A-V-E. You need to, look at anybody say you need to go into a cave. Because calmness activates the voice of Elohim. Calmness activates the voice of enlightenment. Push your neighbor and say, you need to go into a cave. Many times, you need to go through a few things. Someone say few. F-E-W. You need to go through fire, earthquake, and wind to get to the small voice. Why? Because sometimes, many times... When you kneel down to pray, or when you're trying to pray, you're, there's, you can have fiery talk, thoughts. There are people that are upsetting you. Are, are, you, are you with me? People that make you angry. Um, you, are, you are unhappy. So you cannot, you cannot be creative. When, when you are angry, you can't be creative. When things are in your life that are making you upset. That is fire. Hello, are you with me? Fire, fiery thoughts or fairy thoughts are also feverish. Lust will not allow you to come near wisdom. The fire of lust, the fire of, of, of pornography or, or, or adultery or addiction. Thoughts People that are addicted, they have this compulsion, this craving just comes and just moves them. They have to drink. Hello? Earth. Anything that's earthy is crude. You know, people are simply just, they like to swear. They're just not refined. They're just, they're just, they're just uncouth. Are you with me? You, you just see somebody, you want to slap them, you just want to, you don't, you don't even want to listen. You're crude. Tap your neighbor and say, don't be crude. Wind. Uh, wind. People, there are some people that, that their thoughts are all over the place. They can't concentrate. I said, I leave the, I leave the iron on, 
the, oh, wait, what, what, this, that. You know, they can't just settle. All kinds of thoughts are flowing through your mind. But sometimes you have to allow these things to pass through so that you, you can arrive at the place of quietness. Hallelujah. Don't be distracted by your fairy thoughts, your earthy thoughts, or your windy thoughts. Stay. Allow them to pass. Stay. Tap your name and say, stay. Just hold yourself. And allow the voice of wisdom, because wisdom comes after. Wisdom is not in those fiery thoughts, not in the windy thoughts. Wisdom is not in the crude thoughts. Wisdom comes after you allow those things to pass. Are you with me? And may God give you the, the discipline and the grace to come into your cave, the place of calmness. Because some of you just need to sit down and reflect. Hallelujah. I was speaking to somebody recently, and I said, you need counseling. He said, I don't need counseling. I said, the concept of counseling is so you can hear yourself. Because the counselor is not going to say anything new. The counselor is going to take your thoughts, package them together, and say, this is your answer. So your answer is within you. Hello, are you with me? And so some people, you just need to sit down and reflect on your last 10 months, 10 years, one year. Just sit down and reflect. Stop being, going from pillar to post. Allow the voice of wisdom to package your thoughts and direct you in the way of righteousness. And you'll be very surprised at what's taking you five years, ten years, months, can take you weeks and days to achieve. Because wisdom is divine. Wisdom just waits. He doesn't fuss. He, he doesn't argue. He doesn't talk at you. He just waits for you to calm down and to hear his voice. Hallelujah. And God has said to us and speaking to us in City Chapel, that he wants wisdom to walk with us so that we can make proper choices, good choices, right choices, divine choices, prophetic choices, kairos choices, choices that are good, that are profitable, that are powerful, that would change your life. And you stop condemning yourself. You stop looking down on yourself. You stop being angry at life. And that wisdom can help you unpack your thoughts into a flow and living, living water. We're singing that song. The living word. That the living words of wisdom flow through your soul, flow through your mind, flow into your spirit, channel wisdom out of your spirit into your life. Let's bow our heads, please. Let's bow our heads. Hallelujah. In fact, can we stand? Let's do the earth, wind, and fire stuff. I want to teach you something in the next few minutes. The next few minutes. This is just, this is just demonstration. You can drop your bags, drop your whatever. Just the next few minutes. I want to teach you something that may help somebody today. I want us to go through the white wind, the earth, and the fire. And then come to the place of wisdom. Hallelujah. Is that okay? So I'm going to ask... Can we play some music? Some windy music? I'm joking. <laughs> Hallelujah. 
I'm going to ask you to just, for a few minutes, just speak in tongues or pray out loud. Or just pray or just worship. Just go on, just, just, just speak, just begin to just prophesy. This is an exercise. This is what you need to do at home. This is what you need to do in your own time. Hallelujah. Just worship, just praise him. Just magnify him, lift him up. Exalt him. Hallelujah. Just, just pray in the Holy Spirit for a moment. Just give him worship and give him praise. Magnify his name. Just let your thoughts just flow. Hallelujah. Bless him. No matter what you're going through, just no matter what you're thinking. Hallelujah. Let the Holy Spirit take a hold. Lift up the name of the Lord. Exalt him for he is mighty. He is good. He is awesome. Bless his name. Father, we worship you. We give you glory. And we give you praise. Mm. Direct your thoughts towards him. Approach the throne of grace in your heart and in your mind. Bring your marriage to the Lord. Bring your finances to the Lord. Bring everything to Him. Hallelujah. Just worship Him and magnify Him. For He alone is worthy to be praised. Thank you, Jesus. 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 Just grab a hold of the elements. Just grab a hold of the, of the blood and the wine. Hallelujah. Just grab a hold of the blood and the wine. Hallelujah. Father, we worship you. Lord, we give you praise. We magnify your name. And Father, we just take the bread broken for us. And on the cross, his body was broken. And by his stripes, we are healed. I pray that your mind and your soul and your will and your emotions be healed as we break the bread this morning and as we eat of the flesh of our Lord Jesus Christ on the cross, you may eat. Just take the cup. Take the cup. I pray, Lord, that the blood of Jesus wash our minds, cleanse our conscience from anything evil contaminated, and bring about your peace, your tranquility, your presence, your revelation, your instruction. Your wisdom. Now, that we will know where our blessings are. We'll know where our breakthroughs are. We'll make the right choices. You may drink. Just stand quietly where you are for a moment. In quietness and stillness is your strength. In quietness and stillness is wisdom. And I pray that in the world of iPhones and iPads and Netflix and 
entertainment and information overload and a lot of distractions that we will go into our cave, step into the quietness and the calmness that activates the voice of wisdom, Elohim, enlightenment. Father, I pray for everyone present here that your peace will rest. They will hear, we will hear, we will all be guided by your voice and by your wisdom. And the wisdom would rest on our decisions in our relationships, in ministry, in marriage, in finances, in education, in our exams, in our work, in our professions, in our dreams, our projects, our desires, and every situation. And we make the right choices in the name of Jesus. And the people of God said, Amen. You may be seated.